Want to learn how to reduce costs and increase sales in your Google shopping campaigns with negative keywords? I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Let's go. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use negative keywords in your shopping campaigns to reduce your costs, increase your sales, and just have better results overall. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I help e-commerce store owners grow their stores remotely. I make tutorials, case study videos, strategy videos, and overall just teach you how to grow your store all here on YouTube. If this sounds helpful to you, consider subscribing and grow your e-commerce store alongside me in this channel. Okay, so what are negative keywords? Basically, this is your way of telling Google what searches you don't wanna show for. For example, if you sell red shoes, you don't wanna show your ads if someone searches for red slippers. These are different products and you wanna make sure Google doesn't mix them up. So you can put slippers as a negative keyword. This is a simple situation, but gives you an idea of what negative keywords are. Okay, so how do you add them? It's pretty easy actually. Go into Google Ads, Go to your campaigns, go to keywords and go to negative keywords. Here there's a box where you can add in the negative keywords and they'll go into your campaign once you save it. There it is, that's done, easy as pie. Okay, why are negative keywords important for a shopping campaign in particular? Well, the main reason is you can't choose normal keywords for a shopping campaign. Shopping campaigns don't work like that. You use your product feed and Google figures out what the heck your products are. With a normal search campaign, you choose the keywords and bid on those and Google will then show your ads for search queries depending on what your keywords are. So what can you do with shopping campaigns? You will choose all the elements of your product feed, the title, description, images, all that sort of stuff. And then Google will figure out what your products are and show them to the right people. The problem here is that Google sometimes gets it wrong. So it's really important for you to choose negative keywords well so you can guide Google and sculpt that traffic to save you a lot of money in the long term. You don't wanna show for searches that aren't profitable. Red slippers and red shoes are quite different. So you wanna tell Google, hey, I don't wanna show for those red slippers, but I do wanna show for those red shoes and even more targeted terms like red shoes for men. Maybe that's a really good term for you. So you don't want to show for red shoes for women. So you might put women as a phrase match keyword in your negative keyword list. If you don't do this, you might have a lot of people seeing your shopping ads and they might even click your products, but they won't actually convert because your product isn't meant for them. This is all part of digital marketing, showing the right products, the right offer in front of the right people at the right time. We're going to use some strategies to find negative keywords and add them into our campaigns. This is going to help optimize them for the long run and make sure that money stacks up in our favor. So how do you find negative keywords to add to your shopping campaign to reduce those costs? The first way is to add keywords that show that there might not be buying intent for that person. Someone searching for how to do something, how to wear red shoes, they probably have red shoes already, or maybe they're just researching and trying to understand red shoes. For shopping campaigns, they work really well when people are directly searching to buy that product that you're selling. That's why there are a number of keywords like how, where, what, where people are in that research phase of the buyer's journey. They're not in that buying phase. They're sitting there looking at all the search results and trying to understand. They're sitting there with their coffee mug in their hand. The people that are ready to buy are sitting there with their credit card in hand and they will reveal themselves by using searches like buy red shoes online. It has clear search buying intent where they're searching, how do I buy these red shoes? How do I get them into my hands? Those are the searches you want. So with negative keywords, you can filter out the other searches that don't show buying intent. Now, sometimes you'll see in your search terms report that people will convert on these terms. That's why sometimes it's really important to test them out. You might see a search term popping up again and again and no one converts and you're spending $200 on that search term. Definitely add that as a negative, but sometimes Maybe in your niche, maybe with your product, those people do convert. Maybe it's a product that people don't know what the heck it is, but part of that, you convince them to buy straight away. It really depends. So a lot of this is testing, but what I like to do, depending on the product, is to add those in just to make sure that we save those costs at the start, especially if we have a low budget allocation for the shopping campaign. I mentioned this already, but check your search terms report. I'm gonna go into my computer right now and show you how I do this. Let's go. Okay guys, so I'm now on the campaign level looking at some campaigns and on the left hand side, I wanna go into keywords and then search terms. Here we can see what people have actually used when they searched and our ads were clicked. Okay, so we can see here 
um, that we want to go through and basically find are there any search terms here that are not relevant towards what we're showing. This is a shopping campaign, but it's very, very similar with a search campaign as well. So what I like to do is add a filter. So I'm going to go to conversions and say if we haven't had any conversions to so say put this as 0.1. It's then going to show all the ads, uh, all the search queries that resulted in less than 0.1 of a conversion because I have position based conversion tracking set up for the attribution model. It's going to show some that had a tiny someone clicked and then they clicked multiple ads before they converted. That's totally fine. So what we can do is sort by say cost. And we're going to see um, once it loads, we're going to see the different queries that were searched um, and ones that weren't actually relevant. So maybe this one here. Oh, no, that's gone. OK, I'll find another one. Um, so these ones actually don't look too bad. Let me go by impressions because if the click through rate sucks. Okay. Global shop direct. Yeah. That's not related to this at all. Direct is a bit related to the brand, but yeah, that's probably some other e-commerce general store or something like that. So that's what a really good example of one that we would add as even like a phrase match. The, like these ones here, we've actually already added those in because they weren't great terms. Kogan mobile. That's a com competitive, but they're a little bit distant as well as a competitor. Um, and so we go through and, and find the ones here that we can see. Oh, clearly that's not for our product or they haven't converted. Maybe we've spent a lot of money and this takes enough. You've got to need enough data um, to get to, 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 to see what hasn't converted and how much it's cost. But basically going, OK, we don't want to show for that search term as then we, we what I would like to do is I like to copy all these and put them into a spreadsheet, basically, or some sort of list. And then I go into negative keywords and then I'll actually add them in. Uh, with the match types that I'll choose for those different ones. So yeah, that's how you add it in by looking at the search terms report. Hope that helps. The next way to find negative keywords is to use software. What I like to use, what my team uses for many of our stores and client accounts is to use software called Karuya. What this software does is it crawls your search terms report over time and it finds all the search queries that people search with that don't lead to a conversion. This is amazing because they don't just look at the whole query, like how to buy red shoes, but they look at words that are repeated in every single query. No one's going to search for just how, but they might use how in many different ways. Karuya is going to use their algorithms to look at all the words and see patterns. Maybe every time someone uses the word how in the query, no one converts. So that's a good example of a keyword that we want to add to our negative search terms report. I'm going to leave a link in the description to Karuya. I don't get in a commission or anything. You know, I just use it because it's a fantastic piece of software. I recommend checking it out and seeing if it could work for your store. There is also a Google ads script that does a very similar thing, but that requires a bit more of an advanced knowledge of Google ads because you need to do some scripting work with code and that sort of thing. It's a bit more advanced, but if you want to explore that, I'll put the link in the description and you can go down that path and check it out. Okay. A question I get quite often is how often do you check for negative keywords? Well, I like to put it in my routine, so I check on a regular basis, but it does depend on the size of the account and how much data and clicks you're getting. Because if you're barely getting any clicks at all, say 10 clicks per day, going to the search terms report is another exercise that takes time when you might only see one or two extra different search phrases in there, when you can just wait for a week, two weeks, a month, depending on the size of the account, and then put them all in in one batch. This is what I recommend doing. I like to check it at least once a month, if not once every fortnight or once a week for big accounts that are spending a lot more money, say $1,000 per day. You know, you want to check that every day, but even better, use some software so you can batch that. So you're not doing it all manually and going through every single search terms report. That just takes too much time and you should be spending your time in other areas. The cool thing is once you add that negative keyword into the negative keyword list, it's done. Boom. You've added it in. You won't need to do that again because now those searches will be blocked. So you will see that over time, slowly your campaigns are going to improve and improve and improve. It's going to be more and more optimized and you've been slowly crafting that traffic. So it's better and better every single week. This means that there's going to be less work to be done over time. And you're going to get to a point where really you don't only have to check the account once a month for negative keywords. So that's just the benefit. Keep your eyes on the prize. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And even though there's a lot of terms to add at the start, depending on the account, it's going to get easier and easier. And you're doing a great job by doing this. That's all for today. I hope that helped you with your negative keywords for your shopping campaigns. If this was helpful, please 
please hit the like button. That tells YouTube, hey, these guys are making content that's helpful for the people out there building e-commerce stores. If you wanna see more tutorials just like this one, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. I'm making a lot of tutorials, case study videos, audits of Google Ads accounts to help e-commerce store owners out there scale up their ad campaigns and live remotely with their e-commerce store. As always, any questions you might have at all, just leave it in the description and I'll answer every single one as quick as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.